Hello people, what up? In this video, I want to talk about signal amplification. The need for amplification arises because transducers provide signals that are weak in energy. For example, the sensors in your car phone injection system. They will compute every kind of data and transmit to a processing unit. These signals need to be amplified so the actuators and even the processing unit itself will be able to deal with them. The functional block that accomplishes this task of signal amplification is the signal amplifier. When we amplify a signal, we must do the best not to change its form and frequency. No new information should be added. If so, instead of hearing your voice, you would somebody else's while speaking on a microphone or not be able to recognize a friend's voice while talking on the telephone. Therefore, when amplifying a signal, the only change we must cause to the signal is in magnitude, never in frequency or any other characteristic of the signal. If we change any characteristic of a signal, we are adding noise or distortion. In this relationship, V1 is the input voltage, V0 or VO is the output voltage and A is a constant representing the magnitude of amplification or the amplifier gain. You can perceive that this is a linear relationship what would give a line if we plot a curve representing it where A is the inclination of the curve. If A is small, the curve will be smooth, but if A is large, the line is steep. If this was not linear, a linear relationship, the output would display distortion, which is highly unwanted. Power gain. Amplifiers increase the amount of power of a signal. This is an important feature that differentiates them from transformers. Although a transformer may increase the voltage, it never increases the power of a signal. On the other hand, Amplifiers provide at the output a signal that has greater power than that received at its input. Amplifiers have power gain. Here, I.O. is the current that the amplifier delivers to the load resistance. Generally, we wish gain voltage, but sometimes we want to gain current to drive specific devices or a series of devices. Thus, the current gain can be seen as. It should be noticed that current means power lost in cables. Thus, we want current gain only in specific cases. The power gain is the product of the output voltage and output current divided by the product of the input voltage and the input current the output power by the input power, which is also the product of the current gain and the voltage gain. Expressing the gain in decibels, the gains we just defined are dimensionless, for they arise from the ratio of quantities defined in the same unit. Therefore, they can either be expressed as V over V, I over I, and W over W or log logarithmically. When we express a quantity in logarithms, the unit will be decibels. For example, voltage gain in decibels is related to the AV as follows. Likewise, the current gain and the power gain can be expressed as follows. In, this, in these expressions, we use the absolute number of the gain because sometimes the gain can be a negative number. A negative number for the voltage gain and for the current gain doesn't mean attenuation of the signal, but a phase shift between input and output. However, if we found a number between 0 and 1, it would for sure mean attenuation. Power supplies. 
Since the output power is greater than the input power, we should ask ourselves where this additional power comes from. It's easy. The additional power comes from the DC power supplies we must use to feed the amplifier. As we shall see, besides having input and output terminals, amplifiers have extra terminals to accept the power it will need to amplify the signal. As you can see, besides having an input terminal and an output terminal, amplifiers have two extra terminals that are used to inject power into the device so it will have the means to amplify the signal. The terminal labeled V plus is connected to the positive pole of the battery, and the terminal labeled V minus is connected to the negative terminal of another battery. Thus, if there is a source which provides a signal of 10 to the minus 4 volts, and the voltage gain is 100 volts per volt, the output signal, the one which will be sent to the load resistor, will be 10 to the minus 2 volts. In other words, the signal sent to the load has to be exactly the same of the source, but amplified without any distortion. We can only do this if the gain is constant and stable. If the current drawn from the positive pole, if the current drawn from the positive power supply is I1 and the current from the negative power supply is I2, we can say that the DC power delivered to the amplifier is PDC, which equals V1 times I1 plus V2 times I2. The total power delivered to the amplifier must equal the power lost or dissipated in the process by heat and the power delivered to the load. The power drawn for the signal source is often weak, small and cheap depending on the application. Thus, the way we measure the efficiency of an amplifier is by dividing the amount of power delivered to the load by the amount of power drawn from the DC sources and multiplying the result by 100 to get a percentage. Saturation. Like I said, amplifiers better do their job when the gain is constant. Thus, input and output have a linear relationship. However, in practice, it's not possible at all times. The curve input versus output will remain linear only over a limited range. Beyond the linear segment of the curve, the amplifier will saturate and not operate as we wish it. The following graph shows how it often happens. Besides being a didactic and simplistic way of showing how it happens, for a beginner in amplifier design, it's enough. We can see here that the curve is linear from L minus to L plus and loses its linearity beyond these values. Therefore, while working with amplifiers, we must keep the input signal between L minus and L plus. For if we let the input signal grow larger than these two extremes, it will be clipped off and an unwanted noise will be displayed. You can see on the graph below that if we let the input signal cross the dotted line, the relationship, the corresponding output will be larger than allowed. Transfer characteristic of real amplifiers. Hitherto, we've accepted that the relationship between input and output is linear, however, it will only be true when we talk about ideal amplifiers or in a very limited range of the input-output curve of real amplifiers. Luckily, we can use a technique to set the operating point at the middle of the linear segment and use small signals to not cross the boundary between the linear and the non-linear parts of the curve. This technique is called biasing 
backend, it consists of using a DC voltage source which serves as a base for the signal to swing across. The point Q is our operating point, which is also called DC bias point. We must pay attention here for the amplified signal is not only the wanted signal but a composition of two voltages. The DC voltage we must use to bias the signal and the working signal. The figure shows a small signal being applied at the input terminal of the amplifier in series with a DC source. This DC source imposes the small signal to swing around it. At the output, the amplified signal is a composition of two voltages, the amplified DC voltage and the amplified signal we are working with. The instantaneous gain will be the derivative of V0 over VI at the working point. Circuit models, voltage amplifier. In voltage amplifiers, both the output and the input are voltage signals. The amplifier can be modeled as being a controlled voltage source whose value depends on the value of the input voltage multiplied by the amplifier gain. This figure shows the model where Ri is the input resistance whose value we want to be as large as possible, so all the voltage of the source will appear at it. On the other side, we want Ro to be as low as possible, to not lose part of the amplified signal area. The next figure shows the complete model where a voltage source has been applied. To highlight what was said, we say that RS has to be as low as possible to not lose part of the signal in transmission. RI has to be as large as possible so the voltage of the source will appear at it. As the gain depends on the input voltage, the voltage on Ri, we want to make it be equal to the voltage of the source and we do it by making Ri large. On the load side, we want the voltage of the load to be equal to that of the controlled voltage source. Thus, Ro has to be made short and Rl much greater than Ro. Applying a voltage divider at the load side, we see that the voltage VO on the load equals the amount of amplification times the fraction of the amplified voltage that reaches the load. Therefore, the real voltage gain is the ratio between V0 and VI and equals the gain AVO or AV0, which is called the open circuit gain times the voltage divider which represents a fraction of the input voltage that will reach the load. This expression represents the fraction of the signal source voltage that will be amplified. Remember that we wish Rs to be the lowest possible and Ri the largest. The final expression of the gain is that which correlates the fraction of the signal source voltage which gets amplified with the fraction of the amplified voltage which reaches the load. Current amplifier. In the current amplifier, we want our I to be as low as possible, so the current that will flow through it will be as large as possible. Thus, the fraction of the current that will be amplified closely resembles that provided by the source. On the load side, we want the resistance RO to be the largest possible, ideally an open circuit. Thus, no current will flow through it, and all 
the amplified current will reach the load. Transconductance amplifiers. Maybe the most important amplifier model is this, the transconductance amplifier. For this is what mostly represents real amplifiers. In real amplifiers, a voltage applied at the input will control the amount of current at the output of a transistor, for example. Thus, the amplifier can be better modeled by the transconductance amplifier where a voltage signal enters the device and a current signal exits at its output. In this model, we'll need to do our best to make our eye and our O as large as possible for two reasons. First, if our eye is large, all the voltage of the signal source will appear at it. Second, if our O is made large, no current will flow through it and all the amplified signal will go to the load. The last model is the transcurrent model, where a current signal will be accepted at the input and a voltage signal will be displayed at the output. Our I is made low to not lose the input current, and our O is made low so no voltage drop will be seen at it and all the amplified voltage will reach the load. So, this was my video on signal amplification. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.